Hello there, this is Red Joy, and today we're going to do a grading of the joinable companions in Baldur's Gate 2 and in the Enhanced Editions. So in looking at the companions, I'm going to be evaluating uh, them on a few things. First off, how easily can, can I pick up the character, since all of these characters are grabbed within uh, early in the game uh, within chapter two. Uh, they're all going to do pretty well there, so I'm going to really be judging them by their story quests. Uh, second off is looking at their ability scores and looking at you know how good they are um, uh, if they if they aren't amazing do they steer towards uh, characters with different play styles right a character who's mid maxed uh, and very uh, is very well focused on one particular play style it might be better than a companion who is more well rounded but is a little more a little less focused per se. Um, also, do they have any special abilities, any special items, uh, any unique qualities that make them? Uh, if so, uh, are those unique elements worth it? Um, if not, are they flexible enough to be played around with uh, for different options or ways to build the character? For example, if there is a character who is uh, who has a unique armor set um, or a unique weapon, is it you know worth? Is it was it worth keeping them with that weapon? Uh, if the weapon is not very good, or is it worth kind of keeping them but not keeping the weapon and giving you know them a different weapon? Is that better? Uh, that's of course something else. That's another another option. And then finally, uh, simply put, how much do I actually like the character, the companion themselves? Do they annoy me? Um, you know, this is the kind of X factor, or the uh, uh, the subjective factor that uh, makes them worth taking or not. A companion might be really great stats wise, but be really obnoxious to take into the party. Um, it's not necessarily a disqualifier, uh, but it can impact how I view the companion. Not only that, but there are characters who are S tier characters, I'll go into the rankings in just a moment, um, but are, shall we say, I wouldn't say, um, they would be characters that I don't usually pick up because I don't find their characters to be very intriguing or fun to play with. Um, so uh, you can see from the uh, rankings here, in fact, I'm gonna make one minor change. This should be an F, not a D. D is for cowards, I'm kidding. Um, no, so uh, as I mentioned before, these characters are, uh, companions are graded. Um, without any modded locations or any changes of how they play from the original game. Um, they are basically, uh, they basically are picked up whether you're playing uh, SES or if you're playing uh, other forms, uh, you can basically, these grades are pretty much gonna be based on kind of my opinion. Um, I will kind of place these characters above or below other characters, but really it's it's such a minute difference. It's mostly based on you know what your main character is going to be that will make a big impact on that. So in looking at the grades, uh, grades if you watch my Baldur's Gate 1 uh, companions video, the uh, they are very similar, right? Uh, companions who earn an F are weaker, they serve little function in the party, and they die very easily. Uh, they tend to be also tend to be very obnoxious or annoying and they just they they i would not pick up these characters unless i was doing completionist runs right think for example eldoth from Baldur's gate one he is an f-tier character because he's just not very good um next are uh, uh c companions if this character gets a c um they're average uh they may have a purpose or a function uh but these characters um there are characters who much do what they do much better and uh, are also very quick to die. Uh, usually take these characters if you desperately need somebody for a very specific role or if you just need to do their story quest um, to get some XP, uh, take them with you. Characters who are uh, earn a B are good, but they aren't amazing. You, um, you might need them to do what they do, uh, though there might be better options. These could be good characters, but maybe have annoying uh, mechanics or quirks that make them painful to take with you. Um, if you need a character to fit a very, very specified role or specific role, or if you really, really like their quest and you think that they're useful beyond that quest, they might get a B tier. Um, they're pretty much good enough to take in the party, regardless of your party, if you have the need for their particular build. Companions who get an A, 
are characters who are usually great characters. Um, they're usually pretty flexible and they don't tend to be very annoying. Uh, these are characters who have some sort of gimmick that works well or lets them you know, be survivable or do a lot of damage to opponents or give utility to your party. Um, these are characters who might be absolutely amazing uh, but are picked up a bit late in the game or late in the quest or maybe there's a convoluted way of getting them that's not really that fun to, to, to get them through. Um, they can be of good use to the party regardless. So these are characters that are really, really quite good. But then there are S tier characters. These are the top tier characters. These are the best characters of what they do. Um, these are usually characters who maybe even have some skills that might some might consider to be broken. Um, uh, you can usually pick them up very early in the game. All these characters are really picked up in, in chapter two with these, you know, a couple notable exceptions. But um, regardless, S tier characters are, if you were building the most optimized party, these would be the characters that you would pick up first before picking up the A tier characters. Um, these these characters should be considered for your first run or um, should be highly considered for your first run. Note that these are not the canonical story characters. We'll get into that when we get into it. Um, as a final note, as with the Baldur's, Baldur's Gate 1 characters, um, who were much more spread out uh, than some companions, there were definitely characters who were like, you know, ranked as F tier and there were quite a few um, these can these companions all tend to be better there are fewer of them but they all tend to be better um, even I would argue the F tier characters may have some characteristic or some feature that might make them really good in certain situations it's all somewhat relative at a certain point so um, not only that but you're all getting these companions earlier in the game so it's definitely worthwhile to, if you're trying to do completion runs and trying to try them all out, you're not really gonna have that bad of a time if you get a character that is an F tier character, right? You're probably gonna be just fine with it. Um, all these will impact the, the story. Uh, so the grades are gonna be slightly higher than those in Baldur's Gate 1, although there, again, are gonna be F tier characters, but they're gonna be better F tier characters than the Baldur's Gate 1 F tier characters. So. Uh, I'm going to do this list alphabetically. Um, I'm going to put the enhanced edition characters right in there. Um, there is going to be one character I'm going to leave out. Let me look at this format. By the way, I'm using notes for this. Shocker. Um, yeah, that character is not included. Uh, I don't, I'm not including Wilson. Uh, just because A, I've never, never had the situation where I've taken him with me. And B, if I were... I, I feel like... I feel like Wilson should be treated the same way as we tr as a like wizard treats a familiar, right? And making him a companion, an NPC, I think does familiars a much bigger disservice. So I just think uh, I think it's really kind of a weird inclusion. Um, I don't include him a because he's not he's not on this list, and b because I just don't think he I I, I can't really grade him, right? He might be amazing the way he does, but I. Uh, I don't have a purpose in ever taking him in the party. Even if I were to run into him, you know, I just wouldn't care to take him. So I do have, uh, I have lovely notes here, as mentioned. I have one person who I'm going to put out of order. I'm going to do first, and that's Emwyn. Emwyn is the companion you get uh, from Baldur's Gate 1. She's very important to the story. And I actually put her as A tier. Um, she's grabbed at the very beginning of the game, uh, just like in Baldur's Gate 1. She's automatically dual classed at mage uh, from thief, and the thief made the thief level was level seven, so she is, um, I'm sorry, level six, and so she's mage level seven, so she has all of her thieving abilities as well as being a level seven mage. So that makes her very very powerful. Um, downside, she spends chapters one, two, and three in prison. That kind of sucks. Um, there are other options for a thief mage combo, uh, one of which I would argue is a bit better, but uh, she does a nice job of fulfilling enough of the thiefing utility to make her useful, and uh, she does have the advantage of being a very powerful mage. So I think she's a solid A tier character. There are some players who don't really like her personality. I, I think I like Emma Wynn in Baldur's Gate 2 much better than I like her in Baldur's Gate 1, right? 
and uh, for that, I think she has much bigger character development. Um, she's a bit of a sad sack, but uh, if you encounter what she went and encountered, and trust me, we're going through all of those details in my story run, which you should totally check out on my channel, um, you would be a sad sack too. So um, I give her an A tier. I think that she's pretty solid uh, of a character as a mage thief. The only, the biggest thing throwing her back is she's not with you for um, for a solid third of the game. So, uh, but she does scale up to when you, um, when she reunites with you, she scales up with you, right? So she's not a drag on your experience points. Uh, next up is Aerie. Aerie, I also put at A tier. Uh, I would put her a little bit below MON if I were to kind of rank the characters within um, A tier. And the reason why, uh, it also should be stated that this is all kind of my opinion on these characters. Um, there are going to be some picks that you will hate, I guarantee it. Uh, but you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, she's grabbed, M uh, sorry, Ares grabbed at the circus right in Joaquin's promenade, right when you get out of Ironicus's dungeon, you can immediately do her quest even before you go to Galen Bale and start chapter two. So she is very early on. Uh, she's one of the very few characters you can get in chapter one. And um, the downside to her is that her being a cleric mage can make it difficult, right? Uh, on one hand, she has access to a ton of spells, divine spells and arcane spells, and she will use them and she will rock them, right? She's got decent stats in those areas. She isn't a frontline fighter, but she can cast enough spells to make her a good tank. So she can actually do pretty, pretty well in combat, but there's a lot of micromanagement that's involved. But if you toss on a couple of sequencers with her, or uh, you know, um, you know, spell sequencers or, or contingency spells on her, um, she can incorporate the divine spells with the arcane spells to give her a, a huge amount of boosts to her uh, to her capabilities, and you can kind of have her do whatever you want her to do in melee. Um, she so with that, she has the cap capacity to be very flexible in combat. Um, she's got good options for defense, for support, for offense, and for controlling or debuffing enemies. So. Uh, ultimately for that, I give her the rank of an A. Um, she, her personality-wise, she has, uh, she's a goody two-shoes. She will basically be really annoyed if you make evil options or really choices or evil choices. She'll always want you to go out and do the good things. Um, uh, being a lawful good character, which I actually kind of, you know, it's kind of refreshing, right? <laughs> um, she whines a lot about her missing wings but the fact that you can straight up tell her suck it up buttercup and then she later on says listen i thought about what you said you're right i need to i need to grow up and just deal with the fact that my wings are gone and i'll, I'll live right um her romance her romance is the simplest romance it's the hardest one to mess up um uh, but if you, yeah, if you don't screw it up, you'll be, you'll be fine. It's a pretty good romance. Um, uh, it's the kind of like the lawful good, good two shoes romance version. And, um, it's not a bad option. So ultimately I give her an A tier. I think she may, she's more difficult than many people expect because she has so many spells at her perusal. But once you get a hang on what the spells are, she's very good. All right. Let's talk about Anima next. Animan is lawful neutral. Uh, he is a human. Uh, he goes from cleric to fighter. I believe it's also at level six or it's at level seven. Um, similar to what M1 does just with the other two classes. I actually put him at S tier. I think he is one of the best companions you can get in the game. Um, you pick him up at the Copper Cornet in the slums. Um, he, you said the downsides to him uh, his stats are um, stats are a little low in certain areas, right? He's got a low dexterity and a low wisdom, which is a little bit annoying. But the wisdom can be made up for if you do a certain things in his quest line, which I'll talk about in just a sec. Um, and dexterity can be brought up with items. So that's, that's fine as far as that goes. 
he can be one of the tankiest characters in the game, right? Because he can cast spells that uh, give him certain magic protections. You can use high level of, uh, sorry, high, high level abilities, HLAs, to make him very, very, very tanky as well. Uh, give him like you know, hardiness and whatnot. And he can, since he he is a fighter who is naturally inclined to use blunt weapons or slings, he will hit like a Mack truck. Remember, he's got 18 strength. So he can hit very, very, very hard. Um, so I really, really like him. Character-wise, he's an arrogant dolt. And I love it. I love the fact that he is just the kind of arrogant dolt where everybody recognizes him as an arrogant dolt. And he's basically just like... Everyone, everyone kind of hates on him. But then, you know, he has these character growth moments that are really kind of refreshing, right? Or character detriment character character shrinkage moments yeah we'll go with that character shrink it shrinkage moments um he has he of of all of the characters you see in this game he is one of the few who can actually change their alignment and that's really cool right he starts as lawful neutral and you can change his alignment in either direction and that's kind of fascinating right um so uh my recommendation is give both of the options um for his kind of alignment shift give them both a try see if if you like one or if you like the other um uh if you go in one direction you do get an increase in um you do get an increase in wisdom if you go in another direction you get more xp so play around with that decide how you want to play that out one thing to note, I think his romance is horrible. Um, he will romance any female, I believe female humans, half-elves, and elves. And his romance is dreadful. It's dreadful. Um, I would go with one of the other uh, enhanced edition NPCs over doing a romance with him. It's just so bad. It's so incredibly cheesy. It's, yeah, it's just unpleasant to have to sit through. Um, so I would, I would, even if you were a female character of one of those, uh, races, I would avoid it. Just don't, don't do it. There's other ways you can, you know, uh, stick to Tinder, ladies, whatever version of Tinder is in, uh, Faerun, just stick to that. Okay. Uh, but all in all S tier character, great. Take him with you, especially if it's your first time playing and you need to have a cleric that can actually stand up, uh, to a little bit of damage, take him with you. All right, next up is CERN. CERN just picked up a trade meet. Um, he is a true neutral human shapeshifter druid. Uh, he's the first character to go in C tier. Um, I think shapeshifters are okay. You have to, though I will say, you have to pretty much give them a... Uh, there are mods to make them significantly better. And he's not really helped out by his stats if you do buff them up if you use the mods i believe um the uh, both ses and the tweaks anthology mods make them better so you can bump them up to like a b and i think that that you'll be you'd be okay doing that but as it stands i just find cern to be kind of stat wise and class wise kind of a lame character even though i don't actually think his personality is that bad i think him being kind of a truly serene druid is actually kind of interesting. Um, I also think it's kind of interesting. He's kind of a deadbeat dad. <laughs> he's like, he's like, okay, I got this kid, so I'm going to like leave him so I can go off to the woods and, um, you know, hang out at Woodstock with all my friends. I mean, trade me with all my friends. I mean, the druids go with all my friends. Um, that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. Uh, but I do... I, his character is not enough for me to actually bump him up any higher. Um, higher end of C tier because you know, druids do get a lot of power, but I think his stats are bringing him down. So C tier for me. Um, mark down in the comments below how much you hate me because I don't mark druids. I, I love druids and they have a huge amount of power to them. Uh, I think that they are the best divine spellcaster. I think they're better than clerics, but 
uh, because they, their levels five, six, and seven spells are really good, but uh, shapeshifters lose out on quite a bit with it. So, next up is Dorn. Dorn gets C tier. Dorn has picked up a trade me. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the, not trade me. The Temple District. He's picked up a Temple District. He is not F tier for two reasons. First and foremost, he has pretty decent immunities, including negative plane protection, which I think, um, I, if you saw my Nox run, you know that I hate level drain. I'm freaked out by level drain. It's a, it's a psychological response. Um, I absolutely hate the fact that my character can be as beefy as beef can be, grade A beef, but a couple hits from a vampire will bring me down to level one and I could just die within another hit. Um, but Dorn doesn't have to worry about that because he's immune to level drain. Um, and you just, so you can send him straight into a vampires and as long as he doesn't get like charmed or dominated, uh, which there are ways to prevent that, uh, he can rock it. Uh, the other thing is that his strength, his strength is strength 19. He hits incredibly hard and that's fantastic. Uh, but his constitution is not very good it's only 14 that's not good for a frontline fighter um and by the way these ability scores really do translate right they really do translate much uh much stronger in combat than people realize right um so i don't i i would have expected him to at least have 16 especially for being a half orc right you would want half orc to step up and to to have um uh, really kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the baddies. Um, he, so he's not nearly as tanky as I'd like him to be. I could, you could say you can give him a good ranged weapon, like a composite bow or a, you know, heavy crossbow. I think that's fine. I think that's a fine way to play him. But like, if you're already immune to a ton of things, you might as well be the guy who goes in the front lines. So, but you can't do that because he doesn't have a good constitution. Um, so he stays in C tier. Character-wise, you know, the, the Dark Edge Lord slaughter of everybody in my Dark Past thing, it's it would be cool if he had like an additional gimmick to it, right? For example, I think there's a character in one of the the Pathfinder games who is just like that, except he's like a gnome. That's awesome. That is so cool. Like a gnome. You would not expect that out of a gnome, but he is, and he's so awesome. Uh, well, I don't know. I've actually never played, but I like that concept, right? Him being a half orc, excuse me, half orc edge lord. You know, work on your material. It's just not worth it. I don't. I don't. I just don't find him very useful uh, in the party, and I don't like his character much at all. Uh, so, next up is Edwin. Edwin is a lawful evil human conjurer, which is a type of mage. He's grabbed in the Mavar quest line in the docks. He is also S tier. I would put him a little bit below Anaman. I know that he is amongst the best spellcasters in the game. Here's the, I will explain the reason why I put him a little bit below Anaman uh, in just a second. But the thing, you know, he's in, he is he's the best spell arcane spellcaster that's picked up by as a companion, right? No other spellcaster can do what he does. He gets more spells per level. He has a really good spell uh, school of conjuration which means that he's not getting divination spells. Okay, big deal. He misses out on what identify, detect invisibility. That's why you bring other characters along that can do any of those things. You bring on like any bard or, you know, any bard can identify things and oh yeah, you can also go to a shop to identify things for a 100 gold piece. That's yeah, not going to break the bank. It's just not. Um so he's not missing out much on being a conjurer, and he just all happens to have some really powerful spells that can do some pretty gnarly things. Um, he, uh, his quest to become a lich is legendary in how amazing it is, um, and so it, it, the the quest line is actually really really interesting and funny. Um, the one way I would, the one thing that kind of doesn't put him quite the same, or puts him a little under Animan as far as the S tier characters goes, is he has quite a few conflicts, and almost all of the conflicts he has results in fighting, in fighting. Like, characters will literally, 
become uncontrollable and they will start killing each other and that's that's something that i just i don't i don't like i i don't like and i i don't like when it happens i don't like it when my characters leave because my reputation is too high um i don't like it <laughs> inevitably i fall into that trap because uh, i'm a goody two shoes and i always spike my reputation up super high um but then my evil characters are like i don't want any of this i don't want i don't want free drinks and lower prices at shops this is silly i don't understand the mentality that that has to go into that but um but yeah no i i i think edwin gets just a few points knocked off for those conflicts um i do also have to confess some of his person his personality does grate me a little bit remember how i mentioned at the beginning of the video or earlier in the video that um there are s tier characters i don't usually take with me he is one of them I, I recognize story-wise, stats-wise, class-wise, he's great. He's awesome. He's a great spellcaster. I just, I, I find the whole like, oh, I'm going to plot to overthrow you thing to be like, you're not going to do it, dude. You're a pansy. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it at all. So stop wasting my time. Suck it up, buttercup. All right. So S tier. He's very good. All right, next is Hair Delise. Hair Delise is a chaotic neutral tiefling bard or tiefling blade. Uh, he's grabbed with the Playhouse quest line. A um, couple things before I start. I think of the companion characters, picking him up, you have to go through more of more things than other characters in picking him up. So that is a minor thing against him, but uh, ultimately I put him at A tier. I think he's really quite good, and it's very interesting that it's right next to Aerie. Um, uh, my initial issues with bards and blades is that they don't solo well. Well, Herr Delis is not going to be soloing. He's going to be part of a group, and he makes a great party member. He um, gets magic that blades, or bards in general, including blades, including Herr Delis, get spells that scale very well. Because what happens is that they will get spells starting at level 2. And then from there, they get levels much faster than a normal mage would. So while Edwin is dealing with a certain number of stone skins, Herr Delis may get a lot more stone skins because his levels, he will be a much higher blade than Edwin is a conjurer. So he will be able to stand in combat more. And not only that, but he actually has more access to better weapons and he can hit harder, right? So he um he's not going to get as many castings per day but he will be able to tank much better right so stone skin mirror image if you get those two spells as soon as possible he could be a fantastic tank not only that but you can also uh get him like protection from magical weapons um uh, other defensive spells to make sure that he can stick around in combat for a really 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 long time he has um uh, and in his weapons, you give him short swords, a pair of short swords, or other weapons. Remember, the thing about blades, or bards in general, is, is that you're putting one point into lots of weapons. So he's not the kind of guy who will go, when he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody, who, he's not the kind of guy who hits really, really hard every single time. He's the kind of guy who's there to basically parry, dodge, parry, dodge, parry, dodge, mentally speaking, while you send other characters, like Dorn. Right, you send the Dorn in to come and hit with his 19 strength, or Anuman to hit with his 18 strength. You send these characters to to be the the you know heavy hitters, while Herr Delis is being your effective tank, um, which is kind of fascinating. He is an old school Tiefling, a 2.5 edition Tiefling, which means rather than being connected to like devils, kind of like Baldur's Gate 3 would connect them to devils, he's actually connected to the outer planes, right? So he is, um, he's going to get pretty good resistances uh, to cold and fire damage, which is kind of nice. Um, I like his personality, even though he has like, uh, he, he's very good about like kind of the banter between other party members. Um, he, I'm going to say spoiler alert, even though it's pretty obvious, he will steal Aerie away from you. Right, if you're romancing, trying to romance Ari, he will recruit Ari for his play that he's writing, that he's doing, and he will 
fall in love with his main star, which pretty sure violates a couple of ethics. Not only that, but he's crossing me, right? Uh, so he will he will woo Aerie away from you, right? Which if you are a character that's not interested in romancing Aerie, it's kind of a stupid, silly romance, but because there's <laughs> play readings and whatnot, but you know what? Some people like it and some people will enjoy it. So um, rankings, I think this is pretty adequate, right? I put M1 first because she has the utility abilities. Then um, Aerie because she has Cleric and, uh, sorry, Divine and Arcane Spells. And then Herodolese has a very clear function in the party to be your party tank. All right, next off is Hexad. Hexad is a neutral evil vampire thief. Um, she's grabbed at the graveyard sort of you have to go through you have to first off recruit fake hexat at the copper coronet she's obsessed with finding with going to the tombs of dragomir's tomb in the graveyard you go through the tombs it's uncovered that the real hexat is right there ah uh, she's f tier and she's f tier for a couple reasons first off she is a single class main kit thief right I I did a playthrough with a main kit thief. Um, for Baldur's Gate one, it works well, or you can you can do decently with it. For Baldur's Gate two, it's just a bit harder, right? It's a bit harder. It, it you really should have some form of specialization, right, with your thief. You shouldn't you shouldn't just be generalizing, right? It, it, you know, assassins can backstab. Shadow dancers can go in and out of stealth, um, and and bounty hunters lay down traps, and swashbucklers make the mistake mistake of being a swashbuckler. Um, she's just a single class core thief, right? Um, she has powerful stats. The only problem is is that you spend a lot of time outside in the sunshine, and that is not good for Hexat, it's because we all know sunshine does not work for vampires. And so she has this cloak that she wears that dampens a ton of her stats, right? It like lowers all of her stats by like four or more. I don't, I don't have that memorized off the top of my head, but basically um, she's just made weaker throughout a ton of the games. And then if you want to, if you want to like go in and out of, in and out of, of dungeons and tombs and places like that or, or inside, and you want to take off the hood every time you go in so he, she has these really great stats that's nice but it's also a lot of micromanagement and it just doesn't make her a fine character right now i have heard that her quest is not bad um but i've never been interested in doing it so that might disqualify me from judging her too harshly but just from the micromanagement side of it alone of taking on her hood, taking off her hood, taking on her hood, taking off her own, or just dealing with the fact that she's going to be permanently weak. Um, I don't, I don't really like that. So if you have played through the entire quest with her and you basically are like Red Joy, you don't know what you're talking about. She is amazing. Leave a comment below. I really want to, I really want to maybe hear your thoughts on it. Uh, maybe if there is something missing, uh, then. Uh, missing out i will give her kudos to the fact that she will actually have a romance with a female character i think that's really kind of that's really kind of cool um but like you know it's not enough to make to make up for the micromanagement of taking off the hood taking on the hood taking off the hood taking on the hood and then dealing with just the fact that she is a basic thief when there are better thieves in the game that have more utility or more focus on what they are doing so um next up is jihira Jahira is grabbed at the beginning of the game in Irenicus's dungeon. Jahira has pretty decent stats. Um, oh, she is a true neutral half-elf fighter druid. The thing is, is she is, for uh, quite a few points of the game, she could be considered B tier, but I'm actually going to put her in A tier. I'm going to put her above uh, Aerie. And the reason why, I think she is basically on par with M1, right? Like, you could interchange these two and to be mentally totally fine, right? Um, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have her be a little higher than M1, right? Because she's more available in the game. 
Um, she is, uh, I think she she's a better tank, better tank than Cerned, uh, because she has better stats, fighting stats for Thir Cerned. Um, like Cerned, one thing I didn't mention with Cerned that does give him a little bit of credit is at level at at level, I guess it's the equivalent of level nine. She gets uh, iron skins, which is like stone skins, and the fact that she is a kind of fighter as well. Um, that does her credit, and I think that that's really kind of good for her. Um, she can summon critter, critters, she can do melee missile damage, she can shapeshift, she can cast offensive spells, or she can control battlefield. So I think that she's just a better druid than Cerned is, um, with that, the, the, the kind of split levels of being a fighter druid, right? Um, the HLAs that she gets, uh, I've kind of... I believe she could make herself completely immune to damage, or at least physical damage, which is most of the damage in the game. Like, can you imagine her being, getting hardiness, and then earth elemental transformation, and going against fire giants? The fire giants don't stand a, stand a chance. So she is better tanking, better at tanking than Herr Delise. You just have to build her up to that point. The good news is she stays with you, she can stay with you throughout the game, right? Um, uh, so character wise, kind of interesting. She kind of serves as a stepmommy to you, but then she can romance you because of the half elf age difference, right? Um, so yeah, no, spoiler alert for a, you know, 20 year old game, her husband dies in the beginning. So she's a widower, uh, which means you can pounce on that, uh, opportunity, which is a little bit gross, but you know what? Hey. What are you going to do, right? Um, she Her quests are actually kind of interesting. The fact that it gives another side to the Harpers than we saw before. And um, it's very interesting. I really, really kind of like it. Um, now, her romance, from what I have also heard, going back to her romance, I've heard that it is kind of complicated and intricate, and I believe... She, there are points where it's not as, uh, th th I'm sorry, there are points where it can be bugged in the fact that you can't finish it or that there's not enough time in the game to actually finish all of the pieces. Um, I, you'll have to tell me if that is true down below. My understanding when I played through it a couple of years ago was is that I was able to finish it and it does have a kind of payoff with throwing a ball. So, um, so yeah, I, I I just I think Jahira is good. She's not quite S tier, but she she's quite good. Next up is Jan, Jan Janssen. Jan Janssen is chaotic neutral. He's a gnome uh, illusionist thief, and he is S tier. He is S tier. I like him a little better than I like um, Edwin. So uh, he's grabbed at the uh, grabbed at the government district. You can grab him. Basically, you walk right into the government district, go down a little bit. He has a little dialogue with um, the government. Uh, so I instantly like the fact that he's having a disagreement with the government. Um, to play that card on the table. he uh, So he's basically a thief that can do uh, a ton of the uh, a ton of the utility things, except he doesn't have the stealthing ability of other thieves. But it doesn't matter because he can cast uh, illusion spells that make him invisible or better yet just do a ton of things that you know the th these thieves can do otherwise he um then can also cast spells to protect himself right he can do you know stone skin and mirror image he can do uh he can fire bolts that are stunning opponents which some people really don't care for i think are great i love the 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 bruiser mates i think they're awesome they don't do any damage barely any damage but they stun opponents, which means if I'm going in with my melee character and I'm about to lay a smack down on somebody, they're not going to smack me down and I get automatic hits. So uh, no side effect there. Um, he can't cast necromancy spells. But that, that that's the trade-off you got to get. And I think it's worth the trade-off. I think you, you, just, you have a character that is a fantastic utility character who... Um, uh, you you can 
basically you can use him for a ton of other things. Not only that, but he's one of the few thieves that it's a viable option right away to put points into tech delusions because it's better than it's better than true sight. Uh, because True Sight, the way the timing works is a, a, an assassin, an enemy assassin, can be detected by True Sight, then within that turn, drink an invisibility potion, and then backstab before the next uh, True Sight um, activation goes off. With Detect Illusion, I don't think it works that way. I think Detect Illusion basically will just uncover an entire area of illusions before an enemy thief and basically covering an enemy thief before they can um, uh, use a potion of invisibility or before uh, wizards can cast spells. Um, so I think that it's it's a much better timing, a much better way of protecting your uh, your front line or anybody from uh, invisibility spells spells that you or invisibility effects, right? Or illusion effects. Um, other things about Yawn, uh, if you teach him, you can teach him to like set traps. You can teach him to uh, detect traps. You can teach him to open locks. You can teach him to do any of the thieving utility stuff that you need done, right? You don't have to worry so much about him being in combat. His point is to stay out of combat. So if he's in combat, you're doing something wrong. Um, learning new spells, if you give him a potion of genius, just like any mage, right? So you do the same thing with Emwyn or Ed, or Edwin, give him potions of genius, so he doesn't need to have uh, the fantastic intelligence score. Um, and I, for one, love Jan's very, very, very stupid stories. I think he he annoys the heck out of companions, and you get a real sense of the other companions with how they interact with him, right? The reason why I respect Jahira so much is she knows exactly how to interact with Jan. The reason why I think Animan is so damn funny is because his interactions with Jan are absolutely hilarious. Um, so I just think that Jan, um, Jan has very funny interactions with characters, and I really, really enjoy it. Not only that, but his um, his quest, his character companion quest, is. Um, it, it tugs at your heartstrings. It's it's sad in a way that, uh, like, you wish you could do more for the guy. And it gives him a bit of gravity, right, to who he is as a person. Um, so, definitely, if you're not playing with him, you should be. All right, next up is Keldorn. Keldorn is a lawful good human inquisitor, which is a paladin. He's grabbed in the sewers underneath the temple district. Now... Controversial choice. I put him at B tier. I don't know if it's controversial, but uh, I'm putting him at B tier. Um, I do not think he's bad. I don't think he sucks. I just, and I actually like his character, right? I kind of like having a character who is basically the babysitter for a bunch of young nitwits, right? Like uh, Hair Delise, uh, Aerie, uh, um, uh, Emowyn. Animan, right? They're all just a bunch of young bucks, right? And he's the old man who's like, listen, hey, kids, calm your tits. We got to do this the right way, right? So I, I respect the heck out of that. Um, uh, he, I don't think he, yeah, so I don't think he's bad or sucks. Um, I don't have a high opinion of Inquisitors. I think they are one-trick ponies, and they're, they're limited by what they can do right he doesn't cast priest spells which would help to protect him right so he would be able to he would be able to cast armor of faith and later on kind of level 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 one two three and four uh, pal uh, uh divine spells to basically keep his face pretty right if he were a normal paladin he would be able to do that but he's not he is an inquisitor so what you are going to do in order to keep him alive is you're going to keep him with missile weapons, right? He is not the person you give, um, um, comp, uh, basically the, the, the two-handed uh, plus five paladin sword. You don't give that to him, right? Because he will basically use it and he will die very quickly. You keep him in the back, you keep him firing, and you use that dispel magic, um, basically shutting down magic. I, I know some people have, they have this weird thought where they're like, they say, okay, well, it's overpowered, 
right? So then they use a mod to basically cripple that that Inquisitor dispel magic. But then they say that the Inquisitor sucks. It's like, pick one. Either they're going to be overpowered at shutting down magic using the dispel magic at twice their level. And that kind of evens out the fact that they can't cast priest spells. Or don't, or, or you know, don't, don't, you, you know, basically either keep that mod and then, you know, deal with kind of that leveling out or don't keep or don't mod it and let them have that, right? I personally prefer the latter, right? I think it's fine that he is casting, you know, at level, level 16, casting Dispel Magic at level 32 uh, in a room full of baddies and just shutting down all magic, I think is a unique trait that he has, that Inquisitors have. I don't love it. And I think, again, like I said, I think it makes him a one-trick pony, but at least it's something that, that makes him a unique combat character, right? So um, you can give him crossbows. Another thing is you can give him the Azeredge, which uh, he put points into axes. He now basically can, can kill undead pretty easily while keeping his face pretty in the back, right? It's kind of nice. So, um, so I would I, I would say there's no shame in doing that. Uh, for that reason, I think because people misuse him and they try to put him up in the front line because they think, oh, he's got plate mail armor and he's got uh, he's got he's got a big two handed sword that he comes with, and there's um, a, a course mirror that's the plus five you know paladin two handed sword. Yeah, I can send him up to the battle. No, you're not. He's gonna die super quickly. No, that but his dexterity is garbage. His dexterity is ten. So you have to use um items or or potions to bump his dexterity up to a decent level where he'd actually get a good AC. Um so I think he's 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 not terrible, he's fine, but he's not gonna be used the way you think he would be used. Um as far as you know his character goes, again I like his character. I think he has a pretty good character banter. Um there's a very interesting thing where he he is um well he's kind of a bigot right he's he is he hates the drow shocker like <laughs> that is kind of what uh that's kind of what is the standard for a lot of these characters in Faerun, right the 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 drow are kind of you know garbage people that live underground and steal your children and enslave them right so he's not gonna like them shocker um, so I don't, I, I, I think that the, having a foil like that is actually kind of interesting. He has other character banter that's actually kind of interesting. And he has a unique kind of side thing, side quest that he has that, um, kind of like Yawn, kind of tugs at the heartstrings, but tugs at them in a very kind of good feeling kind of way. So like his character, I don't mind his one trick pony, but it is a one trick pony. So B tier for him. Let's go with, oh, skipping a page, skipping a page. Let's go with Corgan. Corgan is a chaotic evil dwarf berserker, which is a type of fighter. Now you would say, okay, berserkers, fantastic fighters. Um, dwarf, great saves. What's not to like? Well, guess what? B tier. Um, really, these two are interchangeable. I think I'm gonna put Corgan a little bit higher. Um, this is my other controversial grade. I think everything about Corgan should work, right? But every time I take him, I get so fed up with hearing, Get me some healing, you blasted fool! Do it now! Right? I get so tired of hearing that every single combat we're in, right? And it's not like I'm... It's not like he's the only one at the front line. It's not like he's uh incompetent at defense but he takes so much damage every single fight um especially on insane difficulty and if you're playing with you know double damage um i'm too cowardly to pay with, play with double damage but if you play with double damage good night corgan like he will go down like that um like the the fighters do not get the same level of tankiness that mages do that clerics do, that druids do, um, that bards do. They they will hit like a truck. And trust me, Corgan will. You want some damage done? 
Get Corgan in there, right? Uh, in fact, him with Hair Delise or him with, you know, protecting Edwin uh, or Jan, that's not a bad combo, right? Especially if they're the ones who are tanking. Um, so you're going to have a special fund, but you're going to have a special fund called healing potions for Corgan. <laughs> if you're going in with any fewer than 20 healing potions to a dungeon for Corgan, you might not be doing it right. Um, so he's a fantastic damage dealer, one of the best in the game, but the problem is, is that he is essentially a glass cannon. It's kind of weird to think of it like that. Um, Berserk is amazing. It will basically help you to defeat um, the Demi Lich that can automatically imprison people. It'll help you to face off against vampires because he's immune, I believe he's immune to level drain with uh, Berserk. I'd tell you, Berserkers, if you've never played with a Berserker, and you're kind of kind of torn off by like torn away by the fact that it's called a berserker and they don't get the same access to doing as much missile damage as other fighters do uh get over it because they are fantastic they are the best kit of damage dealer fighters that you can imagine they are amazing uh so again corgan should be absolutely amazing but he becomes a glass cannon um especially in throne of ball throne of ball him versus a fire giant i'm putting my money all in on the fire giant that fire giant's gonna squish him so quickly um banter wise i love corkin's banter banter he is hilarious uh he is so nasty and mean he is so nasty and mean that airy will leave the party within 24 hours if 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 he is still in the party they have this big fight and if he's still in the party with 24 hours she'll just be like i'm going back to the circus at least when they mocked me uh, she cries a bunch it's it's it would i would say it's sad but i mean if you're taking both of these two with you i mean he's chaotic evil she's lawful good come on guys don't be silly um uh, Cor Corgan, um, <laughs> cost. there is one banter option that is a bit annoying. And I think this would prevent, this is another thing that prevents me from putting him any higher. This is one banter option where if you say the wrong thing, he will absolutely, he will turn on you and actually fight you. He will become an enemy and you cannot recruit him after that. You cannot charm him after that. You can't calm him down. He will just become an enemy and you have to kill him. That's pretty crappy. That's pretty crappy. And it's all because you make the wrong dialogue choices, right? You have to really provoke him. You have to make exactly the right, the wrong choices or the right choices if you're really trying to piss him off. But he, um, he will just straight up attack you, um, which is not entirely unexpected. I mean, like when you do his quest line, one of the guys who you beat up that used to work with him was like, yeah, dude, he just straight up killed two of our buddies for no reason. Um, so I kind of, I think it's hilarious. Um, but I just, he is a part of my language. He's a genuine piece of shit. Um, he's a complete asshole that I feel no guilt over tossing him to the enemies. I just need him to last a little longer when I'm throwing him to the enemy. So B tier, I think I like him a little more than Keldorn, uh, because he can, he can do a little bit more. And last a little bit longer than Kaldorn can, but B tier. All right, next up is Mazzy. Mazzy is, um, she's a lawful good halfling fighter. She's grabbed at the Shadow Temple prison near Umar Hills. I put her at the low end of A tier. She's almost B tier, but I'm gonna put her at the low end of A tier for a couple reasons. Um, she should be, excuse me, she should be a multi class fighter paladin. There's no such thing, but she should be. Um, she'd be pretty great at it. She has the same characteristics of a paladin and what a paladin should be, but she's a halfling. She, um, uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of her lower strength, but the fact that she's a grand ma master, grand mistress in short bows, that kind of helps, right? Um, there, there is one particular dialogue that made me fall in love with her right with kind of her almost I almost kind of wish that there was a romance option for her um as far as her, her character goes right um she's having this 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 discussion with nalia right who i'll talk about in a little bit um and she just she perfectly captures why she is actually a better 
knight, a better paladin, a better lawful good character than either Animan or um, or or uh, Keldorn. She actually gets what it means to be lawful good, and that is so awesome. Um, <laughs> Uh, another character interaction that I think is hilarious is uh, her romance <laughs> with Corgan. Um, I think is very funny. She has really great interactions with um, Valigar. She has good interactions with Aerie. Um I think she she is a good she's a really good choice to take in your party unless you are doing an evil run. If you're doing an evil run. Just don't do it because she actually holds to her principles. She will leave at particular points of the story if you make evil options. She, unlike Corgan, when she leaves the party, she's like, hey, I just can't follow you. I'm done. And she just walks off, right? Which I think is, I think is again, true to what a lawful good character would do. So um, I put her at A. Uh, I think that she, she does... Um, she can do the melee stuff, but she's not going to be great at it. She's going to be great at range combat. If you give her that like three shot um, or, or the Turgon bow that gives an extra shot um, per round, right? If you give that to her, she will she will provide DPS for you that you have never seen. So she is phenomenal, um, and she has kind of additional buffs that make her a very good that make her a very good. Um, uh, character to take with you so i put her at a tier next up is minsk minsk is a neutral good human ranger um he's grabbed right at the beginning of the game excuse me in ironicus's dungeon well you remember how in my Baldur's gate one video one of the things i commented on was minsk's um uh mediocre stats in uh Baldur's gate one well guess what they increased by one they increased by one. Uh, his, I think his, some of his stats are now from 15 to 16. It's not great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Um, Minx is a ranger when he should be a barbarian. He, I think the issue I have with him is that he's geared very poorly. Everybody thinks that you should give him a two-handed sword and have him rush in. I don't think that's the way I would do it, right? Um, he, if I had him... If I had set him up, I would focus him just giving two maces or two axes and then going in, right? Or have him really kind of focus on using bows, right? I think he's got 18 strength, so you can use uh, composite long bows. You can use crossbows with him. Um, I think that that is kind of, that is uh, one thing that you can do with him. Um, or flails, flails, I mean, giving him flail the ages. If you're not going to give it to Animan, give it to Minsk, right? Um, his Berserk is not worth taking. Don't don't use it. It's not very good. Um, Minsk is stupid. He's just stupid. His whole thing is, I am, I am good and I smash evil. There is something, I will smash into it. Um, I get that they they were going with the design for one of the characters that was developed at the early onset of the game uh when they were kind of generating characters and they wanted to stick with him because he was a fan favorite um i'm just not uh, i'm not super interested in it i will say his and i think i made mention of this in Baldur's gate in the Baldur's gate one companions video i will say his reason for having boo as his animal companion i think is fine except I would like for him to have higher stats in order to justify his logic behind it. I think him getting a tiger or a bear would have been much better than I could have two guys in the front line. Now, I will be I will say one thing. I am using the Artisan's Kit Pack um, mod, and they have a mod there that gives them the Rashimi Berserker Kit. If you use that mod, and if you are doing that, I would actually put him as high as A tier. I would put him as high as A tier because then he has a purpose. He gets 1d12 hit points. He gets um, better weapon proficiencies. And he does away with a bunch of the other random ranger stuff that's just not very good. It fits closer to who he is as a character, right? His rage is a lot better. And he becomes a genuine frontline fighter, right? Uh, but as the game is now unmodded, he is... Um, 
he's C tier, and I put him at the low end of C tier, because that with these two, they have something that they can bring to the table, it's just their stats make them kind of meh for most of the game. Minsk, he's not F tier, but he's he's not he's not as good as these two, right? All right. Next up is Nalia. Now, I, Nalia is a chaotic good. She is human. She goes from thief to mage. She's grabbed the copper cornet. I would say, I originally had her at C, but I think that that's unfair. I'm gonna put her low end of B. Um, she duels. There's a couple reasons. One, she duels to mage at level four, which means that her thieving skills are not going to be very good. So she is effectively really leaning into the mage element of it. Um, she's a decent mage, but when you have to compare her to other mages on this list, like Yon, Edwin, Emwyn, she falls short, right? And the fact that she doesn't have the thieving kind of element backing her up means that she's not going to be as good of a thief as Yon, Emwyn, Yoshimo. Um, so I... Um, I just don't, I don't see a good place for her, right? Um, Mage-wise, she can, if you give her stone skin, if you give her mirror image, she will be able to tank, or, you know, um, uh, protection from magic weapons. She'll be able to tank, and she'll do a good job of it. Um, I think her quests are okay, you know? Dear niece Keep, being rescued, by, uh, rescued from the trolls, that's fine. I can deal with that. Um, her quest afterwards is actually kind of interesting, right? Because you have to deal with the other enemy family. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. But that is all made moot by her character, her personality. I find her personality grating. I think the whole um, helping the needy... It, there's nothing that pulls me out of fighting a group of Umber Hulks or Hobgoblins or a dragon more than hearing her scream, FOR THE NEEDY! <laughs> How is that relevant to what we're doing? How is that relevant? It ain't. It ain't. Umber Hulks aren't going to care. Mind Flayers aren't going to care about you and your social welfare program, sweetie. <laughs> like, ah, she is everything that I find obnoxious about... I'm not going to say anymore. I just, I think it's insanely obnoxious. I think her interactions, she's the example of a well-intended twit. And so that's her personality. She does have points though with, where her, her good intentions actually come through to some like good common sense, right? I heard one person say like, if I lived in the Middle Ages, of course I'd be a, kind of a quasi-Marxist. I'm like, oh, I kind of get that, right? But like, she, she's just kind of, kind of obnoxious coming from where she comes from as kind of like a little bit preachy and i'm just like no i don't want anything doing with it so i i put her at b tier i really should kind of put her at c tier but she's not she's not c tier material um next is nira nira is a chaotic this is chaotic good i thought she was chaotic neutral but she should be chaotic good so i'm gonna say chaotic good and someone will correct me down in the comments below um half elf wild mage uh you meet her after going to the bridge district um in the Baldur's gate one companion guide i put her at c tier i put her at b tier um and i think i'm gonna put her better than nira uh, nalia sorry better than nalia um she's better in than in Baldur's gate one because wild mages scale well and when she is a higher level character she will um become very very powerful because she gets extra levels she gets extra spells per level she gets um the ability to cast uh the reckless naomer and she gets a wild search table right those things could make her insanely powerful or they could petrify her when she's trying to cast armor. <laughs> it's really obnoxious, actually. So, um, so here's the way I'm going to say it. Is that I'm going to put her in B tier for two ways, right? One is if you are, if you are playing with reloads, if you're playing with kind of, um, or playing with lower difficulty, right? She could be as high as S tier. 
she could be on the same level as Edwin. If you're playing without reloads or hardcore mode or a really difficult difficulty, I would put her down at C tier. I would not put her at F tier, but I would put her at C tier. Um, because she's just, the randomness makes it so difficult to play, right? And in a game like this, like, you really can't can't be leaving too much to RNG. So I put her at B tier. She's far better in, in Baldur's Gate 2 than in Baldur's Gate 1. Uh, and she's even better in throwing a ball because she's got a lot of levels to her. And when she casts Reckless Naomer at level 30, or whenever she, you know, super high end, she's casting it. And she, if you cast, like, uh, Chaos Shield improve, or can't improve Chaos Shield, she, if she has a Wild Surge, it or if she has a Wild Surge, it's not bad. Most of the time you'll be able to cast, like, Rapid Fire Time Stops or whatever you want to cast, right? So definitely really quite good. Um... But again, I would rank her much higher if you're playing on reloads, because the RNG factor is a major thing. Next up is Rasad. Rasad is a lawful good human monk. He's grabbed at trade meat. He's still really bad. He's still F tier. In fact, I still think he is I think he's worse than Hexat. Because Hexat you can at least use have better stats, decent stats to do a lot of the thieving stuff. Um Rasad, the issue with him is what I said in Baldur's Gate 1, I still uh, coincide. This is that he, his stats are better aligned for a level one monk for fifth edition than for a monk in Baldur's Gate two, in two point five edition. Um, monks need mods in order to be viable. The base monk is not good. There are, you know, I I, I just read a comment earlier. Uh, last week that was talking about how you can get around stuff with using EE Keeper. Okay, that's that's fine. That's that's a way that you can play it. Um, but I just, I, I think that monks, the big issue with them is that they are vulnerable to critical hits. I would, you could, you could remove the X cap, e XP cap remover and put Rasad into a level 50 Rasad into a fight against a fire giant. And just like with Corgan, I would put money on the fire giant. Just a normal fire giant. Because that fire giant's going to squish him. Right? Um, not only that, but Rasad doesn't get... He doesn't get... Um, he doesn't get Stunning Fist. So you can't stun his opponents. Um, but even if you could, you're, you're dealing with a, a creature that has a lot of save. Uh, sa a pretty high save. And... Um, even if he could stun them, I don't even. I don't even think. I don't think a monk would do well against that, uh, unless you have a, a character. Unless you have a monk that is much modded in the game. Uh, I would, by the way, like to play as a monk using those mods. So I might do that. In fact, I think the Arsons Kid Pack improves monks significantly. So you know, let me know down in the comments below if you think I should be doing that for a playthrough. Um, Character-wise, he's fine. He's fine. Uh, he's a little bit jarring at times because he's going to interrupt the story. Like, you could be tracking down Firecrack or Aranicus somewhere, and he'll spout off something. Did I ever tell you about Salune? Salune? Salune is the goddess of the moon or the sun or whoever, right? It doesn't matter. Like, that's not important right now. We, saw we are on a quest right now. We're doing something. Let's keep a little focus, right? But if I tell you off, you're going to get really pissy. You're going to be like, oh. I see you don't want to be enlightened. No, I don't want to be enlightened. I'd rather remain in the dark. Ignorant. Ignorant. All right. I'm going to go in the order, a little bit out of order here. Because next I'm going to go with Valigar. Valigar is, uh, he's a neutral good stalker, which is a type of ranger. He's got Umar Hills. I have looked down upon rangers for a long time. It's the reason why I'm not a huge fan of Minsk, but I actually think he is a fine character. I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him... Actually, I'm going to put him high end of B tier. Um, it's because of versatility, right? Whereas Corgan, he... he he's the the jackass that you send to the front of the, uh, the, of the group to do a bunch of damage and to die very quickly. Valigar can do a couple of different things, right? Um, being a 
being a stalker lets him actually do what Ranger's supposed to do, which is have decent stealth with light armor, weave in and out of combat, uh, shoot distance if you need to, but then go in and actually um, do damage. Uh, and, and do backstab damage and have some decent spells. Not all of them that stalkers get are good, but like, there's several that, you know, web is nice. Web is a great spell. It's an S tier spell. It's amazing. But, um, but, and Valgar can cast that spell, which is really kind of nice. And it works very well if he's also shooting at an opponent's. Um, Valgar has the planar sphere quest, which I'm not a big fan of. I think that as far as a stronghold goes, it's one of the weaker strongholds. Um, do it, whatever, get the job done. Give the man some peace. Um, I think his interactions with wizards is really quite interesting. I think the fact that he hates magic, and he's also like, he's also, uh, he refuses to worship any god, right? Which I think is really interesting, especially in relation to Keldorn, right? Keldorn and him have this very interesting heart to heart where they realize, hey, we're both good guys, but you don't worship any of the gods where I do. What's what's up with that, buddy? And that's kind of an interesting component. I like that. I like that relationship that they have, and I like that kind of element of Valigar's character. Um, so I I think that he, I think his character is actually pretty cool. Plus, his voice is like. His voice is great. Like, I think he's just, he, he is what a ranger should sound like, right? He is my favorite ranger companion in all of these games. Um, Stalkers are a good character. I don't think he's quite A tier because I think he, he, he lacks the direction and he doesn't do anything amazingly well. Like, um, Mazzy can do ranged combat very well, right? Any of these characters can do something really, really well. So I think he lacks in that, but he is almost A tier. And his character does a lot for that, right? All right. So so B tier for him, but it's a reluctant B tier. I wish that he just could do some, one thing a little bit better, right? Next up is Yoshimo. Um, Yoshimo... Actually, no, I'm sorry. Viconia should be next. Viconia should be next. Viconia... Um, neutral evil, drow cleric, 18 wisdom, which is what your cleric should have. So she is S tier. She is, I think, the weakest of the S tier characters. And it's because she has uh, like an eight constitution, a nine constitution, eight or nine constitution, which means that she will get splattered if she so much as has anybody fart around her right um she the way that you recruit her is kind of cool right and the fact that she is literally escaping from a mob and not not escaping from a mob, she literally is about to be put to death by a mob and you go in and you rescue her and she's like great man these surfacers they're so stupid and weak anyway let me join with you fellow surfacers <laughs> i thought that was kind of interesting so um i uh she is a fantastic cleric uh, she will have more divine spells than any other cleric in the game. Uh, it's it, the the constitution thing is negated by the fact that she can cast a wide plethora of spells and have just spell after spell after spell after spell, and I really really enjoy it. Um, even Animan, if he, after if he gets his knighthood, wink wink, um, she'll have more spells than him. Um, romancing Viconia, I think, is strange. She has a very tragic backstory. That kind of ties into her evil persona but i mean she's evil right like she grew up she spent hundreds of years being living in this evil society you know you, you, the sympathy you have towards her is going to be kind of okay well that's, i'm sorry that you grew up the way you did but you could treat people a little bit better and maybe that might do you better right so i have mixed feelings on her character right there's one part of me that's like oh man she would be kind of a cool companion she's like kind of like the you know to the namesake of the actress she reminds me a lot of azula where she is this kind of like sociopath but she's not but she the, she has like a decent reason for being a sociopath right so um i i think that she she does evil well um 
And she, of course, her, you know, the fact that she is a cleric that has a lot of power to her is really kind of interesting too. So S tier, she's the best cleric you can get in the game. Animan probably beats her in a one-to-one -one fist fight, but um, she will definitely give him a run for his money. Don't have her in the same party as Keldorn, by the way. I think I made that clear. Don't have them in the same party. It's bad. Um, so yeah. Next up is Yoshimo. Yoshimo is very interesting because um, she he is a true neutral human bounty hunter, which is a thief, which unlike Hexat, because he has a focus, you can pump tons of points into find trap into sorry uh, set traps and he will be an amazing amazing trap setter so fantastic character um you grab him at the beginning of the game in iron his dungeon if you choose not to grab him you could just say okay meet me up in a local watering hole and he'll be right there at the copper cornet help ready to, to be picked up by you which is the reason for that this guy the good news is he is amazing in chapters 1, 2, and 3. The first part of chapter 3. Bounty Hunters are a really great kid of Thief. I think if I were to redo the rankings of Bounty Hunters, I would put them above Assassins. I think that Bounty Hunters are really, really, really quite good. But the bad news. Spoiler alert for a 20-year-old game. Um, he betrays you in chapter 3, which he dies. And um, you can't use him. Uh, you do get MOM back, so woot. But I think if you wanted, to, if you're looking for a great thief, MON is a MON is not as good of a thief as Yoshima will ever be. Um, the betrayal is pretty obvious, right? If you have played this game before, um, then you will be able to pick up immediately on Yoshimo betraying you. The only one who will be surprised on this channel for Yoshimo betraying him will be Ilthis when we do the story run. So, no, spoiler alert for that. But um, here's the thing. When it comes to grading him, what happens with him is that he will gain XP all throughout chapters 1, 2, and 3. He will gain XP. That is XP that will basically be thrown away when he dies and betrays him. So, the question you have to ask yourself is, is that do you care that much about the lost XP? Oh, by the way, his banter is amazing. His banter is some of the best in the game. Um, he has really great dialogue with Jahira. He has great banter with Keldorn. He has really good banter with... Um, a gr phenomenal banter with Hair to Lease, right? Very short. Um, very good banter with Anomen. Um, Just great banter all around. Um, and he really integrates himself well into the party. Right, which is part of what he's doing. He is making you his friend so that when he betrays you, it's supposed to come as a genuine shock, but it's not. Um, so here's the thing, right? Is that if you, if you are really pissed off with wasted XP and you don't like it, don't take him with you. He will be F tier. Don't take him with you at all. If you are looking for an amazing thief, and you don't mind the missing XP because the way XP works is that it just it, it scales along. And yes, you might have weaker characters coming in, but uh, in the party, but any characters, new characters who come in, like Emwyn, are just going to be matched with the XP level that you're at, right? Then, or if you're just playing for the story and you don't care about XP, right? Then he's A or S tier, right? So. I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to put him at B tier. I'll put him at the low end of B tier because of the wasted XP potential. And I'm a really, I'm a hog for XP. But um, I think that he is, um, I think he's, he is a really good character. He's, he integrates himself well. And I just, I enjoy the heck out of him. And finally, there's Sarabok. Sarabok is chaotic, evil, human fighter. Grabbed at the beginning of Throne of Ball. Basically, you go down, you go into the pocket plane. He says he basically blackmails you into continuing the story. You cannot continue the story unless you do what he does, which is basically resurrect him. Um, he is the bad guy from Baldur's Gate 1. Spoiler alert. If you're watching this video and you've played Baldur's Gate 2, you know who Sarabok is, right? He um, And he makes the offer to join your party, which is the most predictable thing where it's like, you know, you have his portrait right there when you're talking to him. And he is, um, he comes about as being basically uh, a new party member for you. Um, 
is just really tough to rank because I think he's just he's deliciously evil and he's got like really like he is a genuinely uh, awesome character his stats are phenomenal but he's a fighter um he's got great stats for a fighter 18 17 18 for strength dexterity constitution respectively um you can dual class him to be a mage or a thief but i wouldn't oh because he's got 18 intelligence you could make him a thief but a uh, mage but why would you do that it's so late in the game that's not a good call um i realize that the argument that the xp amounts don't really work for you taking him in the party when you do is that he's earned less xp than the other companions and the game does try to counter this with his improved stats and also giving him the sword of chaos which makes it which is stronger when he wields it is really quite good um i i think though the problem is is that he is just a basic fighter and we talked about why it doesn't work well for Corgan. And Corgan at least has the shorty saves and the berserker ability. So he's not as good as that. I think he is I think he's better than Yoshimo because the XP levels like kinda can scale themselves out. But I would I would actually take Nalia over Saravok if I were really if I were not interested in having a if i were more interested in having a magic user than a fighter i would take her over oh that's really tough because i really like his character mm, this is tough where do i put him it's definitely b tier definitely b tier oh none of this crap matters i'll put him in the middle between nalia and no no i would rather take you know what uh, here's what i'll say i would rather take saravok over nalia or uh nira Controversial stance because of the XP issue, but that's my stance, right? He is square in the middle of B tier. So, uh, that's my list. If I were to make any adjustments, um, I may, like, here's the adjustments I would make. Oh, excuse me. Final burp of the night, I hope. I'll put him low end of A tier, and i put him low end of, of B tier. Um... Just because CERN can be very nice with iron skins. And being a werewolf, th the game almost begs you to mod it so that werewolves are capable, shapeshifters are capable. Um, Valigar having. The, Valigar can do a lot of what Mazzy can do. He's just more versatile, um, whereas Mazzy is more focused. And Corgan being the head of B tier just makes sense. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm sure a lot of you are pissed. They're like, oh, Corgan should be S tier. He's the best fighter in the game. Yeah, except when he's going to go toe to toe with, you know, fire giants and, you know, other enemies that will squish him like a bug. You know, oh, Dorn should be way higher. Or, or uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Pick an S tier character that you don't like and, you know, whatever. I, this is... I said that I didn't say this at the beginning. This is obviously my opinion, but like, I'm ready to be proven wrong. Like, leave a comment below. I might not respond to it, but just recognize I am reading it, and I do enjoy hearing kind of these debates about you know, oh well, this character should be a B tier character instead of an A tier character. Like, like leave that comment below, right? Uh, especially since it's so friggin' nebulous, right? I wrote this the script a while back. Uh, it's now. Uh, you know, I haven't even, I haven't used some of these characters I actually haven't used in a little while, but I just know kind of the feeling I have when I use these characters. Their stats convey a certain message. Their stats convey a certain thing. I know that, for example, um, Jahira is not quite an S tier character, but she's still pretty good to have in the party, right? I know that Yoshimo's wasted experience points are gonna be, you know, a big detriment if I'm playing hardcore. Well, okay, when I'm doing a hardcore version, I won't take him with me. I'll take other thieves with me. I'll take Yon with me. Absolutely. Um, 
but I still like him. I still think he's a great character. And you'll notice, like, C and F tier, not that many characters in it. Like, and even with C tier, I could easily take Dorne or Minx and have not a blink of guilt over it, especially when doing a story run. Uh, these two really are terrible characters. You really should be hard pressed not to take, hard pressed to take them. Like, if you, if you're, if you're getting ready to take these two, um, you're doing a completionist run. Kudos to you. Good for you. But that's going to wrap us up for the episode. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you like what I do, please leave the video a like. Subscribe to the channel. Um, and with that, I love you all so much. You guys are amazing. Take care and good luck. We're all counting on you.